I really don't want to make my entire weekly real estate uh, update about Zillow, but man, have they fallen from a great source of data to just, I don't know, um, puffery and misguided information that they serve the, the uh, consumer. And they have the largest real estate company by market capitalization on the stock exchange. And so we're going to take a look at them today. But before we do that, let's get into the actual market. I'm Bill Gross, and this is my weekly real estate update. And we want to start looking at the economy with the two basic factors. We want to look at the statistics on supply and demand. Supply being inventory and demand being interest rates. Last week, interest rates closed just below 7%, 6.98, staying below 7. Uh, overall, over the last year, we've been the, between 6 and 8 in the last few months below 7 uh, uh, below 7% slightly. So that's continue to drive more demand, more buyer activity. And so we're seeing more buyers than there were in the last few months because of these lower interest rates, and that should continue for the foreseeable future. On the seller side, we look at inventory, how many homes are available for sale. And inventory continues to be at low numbers for, other than the pandemic period, slightly below last year, only above the last two years of, of pandemic period, below the pre-pandemic period. So while most economy has adjusted to what I would call back to normal pre-pandemic, the housing market inventory still is way below historic low levels. In fact, this year is below last year by about 7.29%. So there you go, low, low um, uh, inventory overall. Um, specifically in Los Angeles, as a result of the rates, a little more buyer activity, we've moved back towards the seller's market a little firmly. Altus Research has a great tool, and they rate Los Angeles back as a 40, where 38 last week, it, it's down to 39 before that. Back to a 40, which if you look at this graph, is a seller's market, though only somewhat slightly. One of the interesting factors I watch is the dollar per square foot, and that number has risen from below $800 to $843 last month. That tells you that a one square foot of a house would be $843. Um, that number, um, you know, affects the, tells you how many of the higher end homes are being sold, how many retail ready homes versus fix and flips. And overall, the higher price tells you the market's stronger and it's moved in that direction. So overall, the LA market continues to be a slight, but still seller's market, certainly not a buyer's market overall. So if you listen to me at all, you know that um, one of the things that I know about Los Angeles is our politicians, their vision of our city is everybody lives in high rises, mostly rentals next to metro stations. That's If you look around what's being built, that's what's being built. You don't see single family homes being built overall. I came across this picture. You think, well, what does that look like in real life? Here's a picture in um, China of a 20,000 unit apartment building, one building, 20,000 people. This is what politicians in the city of LA and in Sacramento, they fantasize if only we could build more like this and put them on a metro well, that would solve all the problems. Now, these people don't own, they rent. That's a whole nother issue. But this is, I think the, the goal of Los Angeles City and Los Angeles County and Sacramento State politicians. And I just thought, well, what a horrific way to live. But I would show that uh, here on our weekly update as we continue to look at, well, what's the market really looking for? Also, as we talk about news, real estate news, one of the realities is that overall, news websites are becoming less powerful, even in the age of the internet, where you might think people are going online to get more and more of the news. They're not getting them from websites directly. Here's a Here's a stat uh, overall to show the changes in results over year over year. Um, you see finance, Yahoo down about 5%, New York Times down 5%. Uh, here is uh, I'm in, uh, I'm sorry, MSN down 25% over year. News.google down 16%, CNN down 16%. So what you see is a move away from news websites. And what you're going to find is more embedded news, like on real estate sites that brought, draw in news or real estate specific sites that will, will report news information. That's why I think it's important that you understand where the stats really are. And we dissect the news from those companies that are really selling ads, not providing you with real information. Speaking of companies not providing real information, one of the regulars, uh, if you follow me at all, is Redfin. And Redfin's latest nonsense is uh, this article, one third of real estate agents worked with clients relocated due to local laws or politics. 
one third of people of, of real estate agents. Now here's the interesting factoid, half of realtors didn't sell a house last year. So does this one third include those who didn't sell houses? Uh, those Only those who did, we don't really know. But the survey purports to say that one of the main reasons people move is laws and politics. And I do believe people say that. And of course, it's a survey. It's not actual data. What's interesting, though, I think, is Redfin really uses this more for their political activism, which is really what they've become rather than a source of news. Why do I say that? So when you look at the statistics, the one, the one source they quote is an agent of theirs who happens to be, well, what a coincidence, a Redfin premier agent, meaning he's paying them money to be their client. And he says that he knows at least 10 people who move from Texas to other states. They move to the West Coast, presumably California, Washington, or Oregon, because they move to blue places with better policies. Now, what's fascinating about that is we know more people move from California to Texas, uh, I want to say two to one or three to one. So why would you quote somebody who knows people are moving from Texas to California when that's the minority factor, not the majority? And because the uh, Redfin uh, uh, author has to attempt to look um, fair, they just say, well, some buyers are moving the opposite direction. No, way more are moving in the opposite direction. Why are they? And, and having had many friends of mine move from blue state California to red states, like Nevada, Arizona, kind of quasi-red, quasi-blue, Texas and Florida, definitely red, Tennessee. Most of them, while they talk about the laws, it also, they would not have moved if they couldn't sell a house and buy one for either half the price or get twice as much for the same home. And so the policies and politics certainly are emotional and cause people to you know, aspire or consider moving. The reality is, in my experience, nobody moves to buy a bigger house, uh, the same house for more money, or a smaller house for the same money. Did I just say that? Or the same house for a lot more money, twice as much, because of the politics. I don't think anybody's doing that. I don't believe Andrew Vallejo really is saying that, that he knows people who are doing that. There's some other factor. The company relocated them, the company moved back, required in-office participation. But what's clear is people are moving from red states to blue states. Redfin doesn't want to tell you why. They want to quote their customer, and they want to make it sound like all America is moving uh, out of Texas because of their objectionable policies, uh, which is not the case. And here's the important part. They provide no data to support that. So, again, this is a data analyst, a data analyst, data journalist, Dana Anderson. But the article really is not giving us data. It's giving us a survey. And then they're using their own personal conclusions and biases to try to form their progressive political uh, activism, which, again, I don't really mind that they have political points of view. Just don't lie about it and say that that's within data and within the news. OK, continuing, one of the common trends in the news is to blame the man, blame somebody. Don't take responsibility for yourself personally. It's always somebody else's fault. Fortune, which used to be one of the biggest news sources in America, continues that trend with the disenfranchised millennials feel locked out of the housing market and it taints every part of economic life. Wow. Poor them. They're victimized because they're disenfranchised. And disenfranchised means that you've had your ability to vote removed without your involvement. And they feel locked out. Now, are they locked out? See, news would be they're locked out. They feel locked out. Partially, the reason they feel locked out is Fortune Magazine tells them they are. And look at the picture of the weepy little husband looking at his wife who's holding the baby, or the wife looking at her at him as if to say, what the heck's wrong with you? Can you make more money? This is what the news try to do, brainwash us into thinking it's beyond our control. What Fortune Magazine should be doing is, is helping this guy, this husband or wife, how to make more money, how to save more money, how to cut expenses where you can move that's cheaper, maybe downsize to a smaller home and to, to help you get started. But no, that's nothing you're going to hear in real estate news today. Much better to make people feel disenfranchised and locked out. And again, look at the picture. This is not psychological warfare against our consumers. I don't know what it is. But this is the state of news today in the United States. Also under news, here's an interesting fact. You know, when you watch interest rates, 
Oftentimes you'll hear rates are up because of a good jobs market or rates are down because of a good jobs market. Well, it turns out the Biden administration has overstated job creation by more than a million jobs. Now, that's not a political argument. That's based on an analysis that each month they revise the prior month down and adjust for it. And this chronicles month by month how much that's been. And overall, the Bureau of Labor Statistics has had to adjust net down a million jobs in the last 12 months. So this is not an opinion. This is just counting the the, uh, public statements by our government. Well, why would the government overstate jobs creation? Obviously, the government wants you to feel that they're creating jobs. And what happens is rates go up and people panic and buyers get nervous, affects their interest rates. And then the numbers come back out the next month. The rates go back down. They go back up again. And this just creates a uh, constant adjustment to false information. The government's job is to is report good information so all players in the market have a chance to benefit from that information. Instead, our government has been playing politics, and the effect is to make interest rates gyrate more than they do, creating more stress amongst home buyers, and certainly more than home buyers need to. Okay. Again, I don't mean to make this about Zillow every week, but gosh, they just really are it's sad. It's sad. As a company started off with so much data. Let's take a look at their latest article. So here's Zillow now. They're now going to, in addition to rentals, originally it was about the, you know helping the American dream and using data to make things more transparent. Uh, and they had rentals to their website. Now it's individual rooms. So you can't even, they're not going to help you buy a house. They're not going to help you buy a condo. They're not going to help you even rent a house or a condo. <coughs> they're going to help you rent a room from somebody else. Or help you rent your room to somebody else. Um, I don't know. It just seems to me this is a standard corporate practice of, well, let's just be all things to all people and never doing any of them very well. Because the consumers who are going to read information about buying a house is totally different than those consumers who are going to want to rent a room. And yet now Zillow has to dilute their content to reach out to those people as well. And I think that's why they constantly have content about why buyers should be discouraged and why buyers are locked out and why buyers are victims of the economy. And so overall, I would say that this is just another move in our economy away from an ownership class and aspirations of home ownership to settling for renting and being okay with that. Another example by Zillow is an article that was run uh, quoting them in CNBC Don't blame the Fed for high mortgage rates, says Zillow senior economist. And then they'll tell you who the real culprit is. First off, the rates are the rates. Why are we blaming anybody? Right? You can't change the rates by blaming them. But this is the constant theme, if you notice. Blame somebody. Be angry. Be frustrated. Be disappointed. And here Zillow continues that. Don't blame the Fed. Blame Somebody else, and they're going to tell you what that uh, something else is. And again, it used to be that the news would give you ways to make more money or save more money. Instead, it's about this blame game. Who do they blame the high rates on? Well, if you read the article down below, the blame is on the strong economy. Who to blame when rates are going up? A strong economy. Well, many buyers would say, well, strong economy, then why can't I buy a house? That's the problem. See, we are in a strong economy in terms of GDP, gross domestic product, overall production. The problem is the spoils are all going to the top, the rich are getting richer, or the bottom. We're giving more and more handouts, not only to the lowest uh, income Americans, but we're actually giving now thousands of dollars to people from around the world to come here. And who's paying for that? The middle class. And so increasingly, less people in the middle can buy houses and can buy cars. And so it's not the economy is bad. It's you're locked out. No, you're not locked out. It's that the economy has been rigged against the average American for the wealthy. And we see that through so many different articles we've talked about here weekly. But here's an example of where Zillow's telling you, don't blame the Fed, blame the strong economy. But a strong economy should be good. You should wonder why is there a strong economy and it seems like it should be harder, if not for you. And I have to tell you, I've had a great year again. It's not bad for me, but for so many people around me, I can't help but notice how bad the economy is for so many others. Why is that? Well, because we see 
high interest rates, high tax rates, high regulation, make it very hard for people to get started and build businesses. And that's where the problem is in the long run. Okay, last on Zillow. This is just classic. This is telling you the company has completely lost track of their customer. Housing Market 2024, Zillow predicts five hottest home trends that home buyers will be looking for. Let me tell you something. I'm not exactly the design guy in homes. Well, let's list off what those five trends are so you know what they are. At least I can prove to you I know what they are. According to the article, Zillow predicts the, high, the five biggest trends will be brutalism. It's a style of, of um, uh, architecture and a style of designing inside a house. Cold plunge, cold plunge pools. I love cold plunge pool. I don't think that many people are going to get one in their house. Murals. I like murals as much as the next guy. They're not many people's houses. Murano glass chandeliers. Again, beautiful. Very few people can afford them, need them, and want them. And sensory gardens. Now, let me tell you something. I've been in real estate 36 years. I'm one of the top people in my company. I'm the top 1% of producers of a 90,000-plus real estate company. Less than 1% of home buyers will get any of those five hot trends. Less than 1%. I mean, all five of those hot trends are cute, hip, cool, nice. Love to have them. But 99% of home buyers won't even look for any of those five. They want to buy a house to live in. You look at the other articles by Zillow, they're disenfranchised. They're locked out. They're frustrated. They're wondering why the economy is not helping them. They just want a house. And yet Zillow, of course, because it's owned by people with millions of dollars of stock, because they live in you know Silicon Valley and they live in uh, areas where they're wealthy, surrounded by wealthy people. Of course, to them, these are the five high trends. In reality, none of them, mark my words, none of them will even be in the 1% of any of them for 2024. Why does Zillow do this? I don't know. Keep you frustrated to make you feel like you can't afford what other people are affording? I think it's also because they can advertise those five things on the website and get more clicks. But again, not serving the customers and only disserving the customers. And that's the constant trend with Zillow. So what should you do? Well, so I don't get your news from Zillow or the real estate news. I'm a professional real estate agent here in my area. If you have questions, I'd be glad to help you. The key is do the best strategy for you. If it's a good time to buy, buy. Let's get the right strategy for you in place to buy in this market and for the long term. And if it's best for you to sell, let's get together a plan and help you sell in a way that works in this market for you at this time. So if I can help, call, text, email, or reach out to me. I'm at Bill Gross Probate on social media. And as always, make today your best day ever. Thanks so much.